Hey guys, and welcome back to another lesson. Today I'm going to show you how to play lead guitar on your keyboard. Uh, before we get started, what the first thing you should do is get yourself a good library, uh, like a good guitar sound. And I'm personally using uh, Orange Trees uh, Dracus Evolution guitar. I'm not sure if that's the way it's supposed to be pronounced which I think is fantastic. I'm not getting any money for this. This is not a product placement. I just happened to uh, actually get this library and I absolutely love it. I think they uh, outdo pretty much any other company I've seen on the market for guitar sounds. Now, what does it mean to have a good guitar sound? Well, first of all, of course, it's a sound that sounds good to your ears. Uh, the other thing you should look for is good velocity layering. So when you press the key lightly, you get something like a palm mute, which is, you know, when a guitar player presses uh, their palm against the string before picking it. If you press stronger, you get a sustaining sound. And finally, if you press really strong, some sounds will also give you a squeal, like a pinched harmonic. So that's what happens when you kind of hold your pick and kind of like pinch your pick and the string, I guess. So this would be this sound. And the more velocity layers you get, the better or the more convincing your playing will be. I find that like three to four velocity layers of dynamics uh, really helps you get a realistic sound. The second thing you'll need is a keyboard, of course, which can hook up to your sound source. Again, I'm con hooked up to uh, this a sample library which I'm running in Contact in Cubase. Uh, <clears throat> the keyboard itself should probably be unweighted, like a synth keyboard. Uh, I'm playing currently on a digital piano, which is not really ideal, but you know my filming setup is set up for the digital piano, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, and the other thing that's really important for you to have is some sort of either joystick, like this one, uh, or a pitch and modulation wheels. And what the joystick lets you do, it lets you bend the sound. And also if you push it up or if you move the modulation wheel, uh, it modulates the sound. Which actually you won't be using that much. Now when you set up your sound, uh, again everyone has their own preference, but what I do is I set the bend up amount to uh, a major second, which is two semitones. So if I, let's say, press an A, and I bend up, then it bends up to a B, which is two semitones above the A. And when I bend down, I also set it to two semitones, I mean a major second. So, so bending down, uh, bended the note from an A to a G. Uh, <clears throat> some sounds come with like a, a bigger range of bends and they can be useful, but I think for like the basic guitar playing, you probably want to stick to these two, at least until you get kind of a hold of like how this thing is done. Uh, okay, so what are the, like the major tips that will help you sound more like a guitar player? The first thing is you should play scales that guitar players like to play. And probably the most important one is the pentatonic scale. So if I get, let's say I have an A, then the A pentatonic scale will be an A, C, D, E, G, and then it repeats A, C, D, E, G, A, and so on. So if I just play this scale, uh, that's like the basis for a huge amount of solos for lead guitar. And you can just like go over the scale. I mean, pretty much anything you play on the pentatonic A will sound good. Uh, if you want to go beyond the pentatonic, there are a few choices that you can uh, add. Uh, for example, you can add this E flat here or D sharp. which gives it a more kind of a blues feel. Uh, you can also add this G sharp here. Uh, 
which is another option. Uh, another kind of tone I particularly like, again, I'm, this is oriented towards these rock and blues type of solos, is this D sharp here. So, you know, you might go something like... And so on. Now, how do you actually use this joystick thing here? I mean, mostly you'll be using the pitch bin. Well, the idea is that basically when you play guitar, one of the things that you can do is after you hit a note, you can bend the string up. And what this does, it increases the tension on the string and therefore also increases the pitch. So you could say play a G and you can bend up to an A. So, sorry. Uh, another thing you can do with changing the tension on the string is you can very quickly bend up and down. Now actually bending the string down also increases tension, so whatever you do, you're always increasing the tension. So it's like going a little bit up in pitch and then going back, and a little bit up and then going back. And that's basically the idea behind guitar vib uh, vibrato playing. So if I just hit a note and you want to make it more interesting, what you can do is you can Make this small movement with your joystick or pitch wheel, and it will sound like this. And that's basically vibrato. Now you could also use your modulation wheel, in this case I'm just pushing the, the stick up, and this would sound like this. Uh, Personally, what I don't like about this is that, first of all, it doesn't sound very convincing, and second of all, you can't really control the speed of the vibrato. So, again, controlling the speed is kind of like your personal signature, you know, it's your personal sound. So it's something you probably want to do. Uh, and it's important that you learn to use the, the, the um, pitch wheel, or the joystick itself, for doing this sort of vibrato. Now, uh, <clears throat> where would you actually uh, bend down? So, Well, the truth is, like I said, you, you can't really bend down with just changing the tension on the strings. Uh, what you can do, uh, though, is if you have a tremolo arm, you can actually release the tension on the strings and that bends them down. So that's a different kind of uh, vibrato, I guess. Uh, a guitar player that uses this uh, a lot is, uh, I, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, well, it will probably come to me as I, I'll probably write it on the screen after I finish editing this uh, video. Uh, so he uses, the, I mean, a lot of guitar players use the tremolo arm a lot. So, but again, you should be mindful of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Another nice thing about this bend down is that you can uh, also do this for chords, you know, let's say you play a chord. That will be like more of a common thing to do when you're playing chords. Uh, <clears throat> we'll get to a few more bending tricks in a moment, but I'd like to say a few words about playing chords. You have to remember that you're playing guitar and that you're imitating a, a guitar player. So you can't just play chords like a piano player, you know. I mean, sometimes it will sound good, but I mean, you have to be careful of these sort of things. For example, you know, don't play with more... Oh, here's my cat. She wants to join another video. Uh, you Don't play with more than, let's say, six fingers, right? Because there are only six strings on guitar that can ring out simultaneously. So don't play chords like this. Uh, some things that really sound good are fifths, so... And these are known as power chords. Uh, and the other thing is fourths. Which are another variation on the idea of a power chord. So, you know, like there are lots of famous songs that use this sort of uh, fourths or fifths. Uh, 
Okay, uh, let's get back to bending. So what are some tricks that you can do with bending? Well, the first thing is, of course, you can bend up into a note. So let's say you want to play something like... Right, an A, C, and D. So one thing you do is, as a guitar player, you'd play the A, the C, and then you'd bend up to a D. Or, for example, you can bend, you can hit a note, bend up and down, then go down. So, instead of playing, what you do is you bend up to this note above it. And I'm not pushing the joystick all the way, because remember, all the way will get me uh, a major second up to an E. I just want to get to an E flat, so I'm bending it halfway. So, now you might have noticed, uh, in, in case you were paying attention, that when I bent up my C to a D, uh, I couldn't really do a vibrato because I was already, I mean, if I once I hit the D, you'd probably want to have a vibrato going. So what I did is I loosened the tension. Now that's not really as realistic as raising the tension, right? Because when you bend up to a... Well, actually, when I think about it, in this particular, maybe this is not the best example, because when you hit the C and you bend up, you, you might actually do vibrato by releasing tension and then uh, bending it back up. So this would actually be realistic. <laughs> Uh, but, nevertheless, another thing that you can do is you can start from a bent down note, go to your target note, and then use vibrato. So let's say you want to go from a D, from a C to a D. So what you could do is you could hold your joystick down, hit your D, Let it revert back to its original position, I mean the joystick, bringing you back to a D. And then you're free to use your vibrato. Uh, another, so I, I kind of gave you the advice to avoid the modulation part. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you feel more comfortable with it, you can do it every now and then. One particular type of sound where I think it works well is squeals. So if you have this squeal velocity layer on your guitar sound, you can use probably this mod wheel and you know, it will sound fine. Uh, another trick which you can do is you can set the bend down amount, not to a major second, but to a full octave or even more than that. And then what you can do is you can do these string dives. You know, this, this is very popular with metal players. Uh, I don't have it set up on this particular sound, but the idea is that you hit a note and then you have this kind of bomb sound which is kind of like a cliché for metal types of solos. You know, be careful about sounding too clichéd. You know, there's something to be said against uh, trying to sound too much like this sort of fake guitar player. Uh, a few other uh, ideas. Uh, think about bending not the full major second, but only halfway. Like I said, I gave this example. <laughs> This example here, where I only bend uh, a semitone. Uh, but let's say you're playing on a major scale. And you have, you know, you're playing in C major. And what you can do, let's say, let's say an, a nice sounding lick to my ears is... So I'm bending from a B to a C. 
you know, instead of playing, which is what I do as a keyboard player or a piano player, I'm using my bending capabilities. And, you know, this, this can sound great in lots of stuff. Uh, again, you can do it for from the E to the F as well. So I think I've given you, I mean, I hope I've given you some ideas to think about and, and go ahead and practice. In terms of flicks, the best thing you can do is really listen to lead guitar players and just try to transcribe their solos. Again, the pentatonic scale will get you very far. You'll Just by playing around with it, you'll come up with ideas. I'm, I'm absolutely certain of it. Uh, again, just running on it. And incorporating this, these pitch bends and vibrato will, will really get you, I think, fairly far. And beyond that, it's really just a matter of finding your own style as a, as a player. So, again, I hope I've given you some stuff to think about, and uh, hopefully you'll go and practice, uh, find like a good guitar library you like, and I'll see you next time.